One of the reasons believers sometimes struggle to get along is that people's feelings have been hurt. And uh, what we're going to cover today, I know if you've been with me in this, these videos over the last few years, um, we've touched on this. We've already looked at this very issue uh, in this passage, but we're coming back to it because we're looking at what it takes for believers to get along. And so in here in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, the Apostle Paul says that you ought to conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And this is going to be pertinent, how you conduct yourself to getting along. I'm Pastor Tim Holscher, and we're looking at what God's provided us to get along, and we're just surveying through the New Testament, and so we're up here to Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, as we're looking at, in Philippians, some of the problems that the Philippians had, and their problems seem to have been hurt feelings and actually working together. Apparently, some of them don't want to work together any longer. And so he says here that you ought to conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Uh, and probably when he says the gospel of Christ here, I believe this is talking about the good news of the Christ. I don't know that this is the gospel really just about initial salvation, but this is also about now who we all are in Christ together. So this would be one of those places where it's the Christ, and I think that this may be what Paul is saying. But he says, he goes on then, he says, so that whether I come and see you or I'm absent, I will hear about you that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind. If we look across over here into the Greek, and whether you know Greek or not, I'm just going to point this out. We do have the word pneumati, pneuma, spirit, and then we have suke here, one soul, not one mind. Again, uh, when we did the series, if you haven't seen that, the series on what is man, we looked at the fact that man has a spirit and a soul, but part of the problem is much of Christianity is di they're dichotomous. They just believe man is, a, is immaterial and material, and uh, they just make spirit and soul the same thing. But here's the point. Because they don't understand that, then they take the word soul and they make it mind, and they're missing the point. The soul is where believers struggle, or where it's not struggle. That's the context here. The problem with the soul is, or what the soul is, is it's what we sense with. It's how we feel. It's kind of the center of our emotions connected to our senses and things like this. And so in one spirit, these believers can stand and they can have in their spirit, they can know this is the truth. This is the way it is. They can, if we went back up here, they can know what the Christ is and they can know how they're all united uh, in Jesus Christ. And so now they come to this and in one spirit, they can say, yes, this is the truth. But in their soul, they feel differently. But you don't know. That may be true, but this person hurt me. This person just ran right over my ideas. I, I, I was, we were trying to do this, and this person just came in and changed everything that I was working on. And those kind of things happen. If you've served in the body of Christ, you know how there are some people that come along, and, and they may not even intend anything by it. They're just, they have this idea, and they just kind of come run in, and, and are they thoughtless? Well, sure, in that, and thoughtless in terms of they're not really, they're not taking into to consideration the fact that other people have put time and effort. Maybe the other people have a goal, something that they're working towards, and they just come in and run roughshod over it. And there are some people that do it actually because they just are maybe a little bit arrogant. Um, whatever the reason, people's feelings have been hurt. This is why I think the soul is in here. Soul occurs in different forms quite a few times here in Philippians. But he goes, he says, with one soul. And then we have this word striving together. But the word that's translated striving is the word has soon, closely together with, and then athleo, the verb athleo, which means to compete together. We get our word athletic from this. And we do find it in the New Testament that it is used of acting as an athlete, striving. But when you put the soon with there, you're talking about now teamwork. You're talking about a team working together. This isn't a race. 
in which one person is going to run two miles or three miles or, or a marathon or something like that, or a swimming uh, race in which one person is going to swim a certain distance. This isn't an individual event. This is a team effort. And that's what the body of Christ is. We need to learn to look at everything that we do in the body of Christ as a team effort. I think even pastors who spend time studying and get up and then we give sermons or Bible studies, whatever we want to refer to them as, and it's easy for us to forget even what we're doing there, that's still a team effort. Not that necessarily we sit down with a team and come up with a message. There's some churches I realize that do that kind of thing, but that's I don't think that would be the case. But it's just the fact that when we're doing that, like when we when Sunday comes along, it's not all about the pastor and his message. I know we focus on that, but I think there's all kinds of other elements that take place when we get together for church, whether we're getting together on a Sunday for what might be a bigger service for the church or whether we're getting together in homes or whatever it might be, other people contribute. Other people are part of what's going on. And, and I'm even of the opinion, and it's something I've kind of had to learn the hard way, is that I think even sometimes when I'm up front talking, when people have questions or people, somebody thinks of something that maybe as I've been going along, I've missed uh, what might be a really key point in this. And somebody else says, hey, do you mind if I make a suggestion? We go, you can't do that on a Sunday morning. That's not appropriate for a message. Why? Because the way we do church because when we find in the New Testament that there was con that there was a teaching of the Word of God, we find out that it was done in part, at least in part, in some, with some conversation. We just tend to do church very differently, and everybody in the pews sits quietly while the man up front just goes like this, and nobody else ever says anything. So all of that to say that we are working together as a team, and we need to stop and do that together in the faith. And here it says, in the faith with regard to the, to the gospel. And that would be that gospel back in the context. Now, there's some other issues that he brings up in the context, but I want to go down here to chapter 2 and verse 1. He says, therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ. So now Paul is going to take, take this issue of the spirit and the soul, and he's going to kind of walk back and forth between, well, now be doing this for you to all stand in one spirit and this to help you all strive or compete together as a team in one soul. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, this is something that's going to actually affect us in the realm of our spirit. Focus on things that are encouraging in our position in Christ, things that our spirit can and should relate to. Second, if there's any consolation. Now this word consolation means something that soothes. Not, not in any kind of a, uh, what am I trying to say? Not in any kind of a manner that treats this other person like, oh, you just need to be soothed. Oh, we'll just soothe you. But it doesn't take it seriously. No, in the context here, if you are thinking right about who you are in Christ, which would entail thinking about the others, you then also would what? You would then be concerned about soothing other believers helping them in the realm of their soul. Third, if there's any fellowship with regard to the spirit, that's something that only you can appreciate in the realm of your spirit. If there is any then, we have this word affection, this compassion, this strong feeling that you have down here. We, we talk about feeling from our heart. They talked about feeling, for this gut feeling that we have down here. If there's any compassion have compassion on people. There's nothing wrong with having affection. And th then the word that's translated compassion in our, in our word is a, is a word, is a very strong word meaning just to really feel for other people. And so he's actually combining two very strong feeling, uh, intense feeling for care for people that, that people have. And he uses both of these two word, words here. So he says, if you do that, then make my joy complete by being of the same mind. And mind here in this context, if we can get it to come up over here on the other side. Um, 
fulfill my joy in order that you literally, oh, I see why they're doing it because it's connected to, to being. This word here uh, to frame your mind with. Frame your mind then uh, with the same thing. And then having the same love, which is one, it's something that I think can affect both your spirit and your soul. Notice how I think, I'm not saying your spirit and soul are like this. We're just trying to make a distinction here just to help us. Uh, then being united in soul, have this, having one soul, get your souls together. You guys can all, if you're working together and you start caring for each other like this, you can actually be people that their souls are joined in this way. And then it, uh, in this way, and they say united in spirit. No, it's soul. And then intent on one purpose, literally one thing framing your minds with. Notice this idea of framing your mind is so important that he repeats it twice and our English Bibles seem to give us that it's as though it's two different ideas, but it's not two different ideas. Paul's just trying to reiterate, you need to set your, your frame of mind to the same thing. You need to set your frame of mind to the one thing. That's what he's saying. And uh, then verse three, and do nothing from selfish selfishness or selfish ambition or from empty Empty, we have empty conceit, empty glory, empty reputation. Uh, we've based our reputation on something and we don't want to give that up. And he says, just let it go. But with humility, consider one another more important than yourself. You need to mentally lead your mind, your thinking, to consider others better than yourself. And that's where they translate this word consider. It's a, it's a word meaning to lead your mind is the idea. You have to kind of direct your mind to, to think of this because it maybe isn't something natural for you to go to. Now, this is the point of all these things today. You have a spirit. You have a soul. Your spirit is with which you think of, think of things and look at things objectively outside of your experience. Your soul is where you look at things, view things in terms of how you feel, your experience, your senses. And well, as we've said before, in the realm of your soul, uh, these people have been hurt or these people have been. Maybe you're like that and you need to be able to get these two together so that you are united, so that you're thinking the same objectively, but you're also feeling the same. How do you feel the same? Well, he told us how to feel the same up here. He said you focus on encouragement and then you have comfort. Notice from love, not just a, not just kind of a, uh, a selfish kind of comfort. You know, we got we got to soothe him because otherwise he's just going to be a pain. No, you do it out of love. You really care for the person, and then fellowship with the realm of the spirit, and then have genuine, uh, genuine compassion and genuine sense of of mercy to to these people that maybe they're suffering, maybe they're small souled and they really were hurt, and having the same frame of mind, having the same love having the same or framing your mind with the same or the one thing. All of this comes back to the fact that we as believers with a spirit and a soul can get together on the same page and work together to the glory of God. And sometimes we're going to find ourselves in this situation with the other believers that we assemble with wherever we happen to be. And I hope that you can learn from what Paul says you need to be doing and they need to be doing to help all of us get along. Have a good day in the Lord and thank you for joining me.